foreign aid budget may now be diverted to military operations instead, we hear. That's the proposal of Prime Minister David Cameron. He said he's very open to the idea. The green light's now on uh, for the aid money to be used in three areas, then security, demobilisation and peacekeeping. Well, in London, to talk to us is geopolitical analyst Patrick Henningsen. Patrick, I bet you're pleased about this. Uh, you're a British taxpayer, of course. You're going to be one of the people, one of the millions paying for it. Um, but you're also an expert in the field. What do you think about this grand plan? Well, let's look and read between the lines. The tax, the money that we're talking about has already been spent. In other words, the, the, the money that the government collects in taxes is already, is already spoken for. What the British government is doing here is it's going exactly the way of the American model, which is to put the country and the government into debt in order to fund these various foreign aid projects or military aid specifically. So it, all it is really is these pledges of foreign aid are essentially a, a bailout uh, for the arms industry and the security industry. It's or, free money for them. Or is it more that, uh, that uh, David uh, Cameron's uh, conscience is being pricked? He said this is all about moral responsibilities. He's got a moral responsibility to tackle poverty and world security. You don't buy into that then, no? Well, it's probably the same moral responsibility that David Cameron's exercising by selling arms to the Sri Lankan regime that's been guilty of a brutal genocide, ethnic cleansing and absolute mass killing against the uh, Tamil uh, people who are seeking autonomy. That's what the British government is doing as far as morality goes. But um, basically, what Cameron's using the very language of the globalist here, and that's those who are in, in leadership positions who are in favor of, uh, down the road, a world government or a large uh, sort of regional government. But, uh, but hang on, it's a laudable cause. When you really look at this, the suggestion is, is to uh, spend not on combat missions but on peacekeeping missions. There's nothing wrong with that, is it, if you can afford it? Yeah, well, I've seen the exact same words come out of the mouth of Bill Clinton, uh, Barack Obama, George Bush, and David Cameron only three, four weeks ago at the conference in Lagos, Nigeria, said that he admits that much of the foreign aid that British uh, government has been doling out is being wasted or ends up in, quote, the wrong hands. So how is he going to fix that reality, the one that he himself has admitted to? So I wonder which countries are going to be first in line to benefit from this uh, aid? Well, you know, the thing is, you know, we, we, we in the American uh, and the British... Uh, Anglo-American Empire, we're responsible for the majority of these conflicts flaring up uh, and this d unrest flaring up in places like Africa, the Middle East and Asia. We're backing military juntas and we're also fueling the fire of conflict around the world. So it's a bit of a Hegelian flip to come in and say we're also going to provide you with the solutions to these problems in the, in the way of foreign aid. There's some big firms lobbying to get on what's called the foreign aid gravy train. And the military aid gravy train is a huge one. And th these firms are lobbying government to get in there to supply things because their bills, invoices, will be paid by the government. Is any of this set, do you think, to go to British troops in Afghanistan? <laughs> well, you know, the British troops uh, are having trouble getting uh, Kevlar vests and some of the basic requirements that they need to do their job around the world and are put the, put, who are putting the, their lives on the line for maybe for, for the country of Britain, but they're not getting what they need. You know, I spoke to an MP from Mozambique recently who said that we are not interested in any aid, any foreign aid. They, they see foreign aid as a trap. Um, and so you might see down the road some of these countries speaking out against these globalist policies as being the targets of uh, destabilization in the future and because it goes against the economy. And I wonder what Treasury Chief John, George Osborne's going to make of it. Do you think he'll agree? Because he's just been announcing cuts to the armed forces. Well, you know, the, uh, what you have to look at here, which is a lot of people aren't aware, that Britain and France signed a Franco-British military pact, which is a long-term pact looking ahead 50 years. So already we're seeing the borders dissolve in the sort of the form of NATO and these sort of regional governments and regional military forces, world police, if you will, are, are coming into effect. And that those agreements have been signed behind closed doors that was not done in Parliament and it was a, an agreement made behind closed doors. So there's already moves afoot uh, to change the scope 
of what we see now is nation states acting as nation states and we're seeing something completely different for the future i think people need to take a very close look at what's going on and what their political leaders are up to in this department geopolitical analyst patrick henderson thank you for being on the line from london thank you